We've got two tops. <laughs> That's oh. a good start, isn't it? Well, how much do you want for it? Uh, 700 pounds, Mr. Uh, um, uh, 700 pounds, and that's firm. I mean, we couldn't possibly come down from that. We couldn't possibly. I mean, you just stood in the market why it's a giveaway at that price. Hey, you said 600 before we came. It was on that bit of paper. 600? Oh, yes. That's right, didn't it, Stan? 600, you heard of it. It was on that paper you had. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh... Oh, you're right, Mrs. You're absolutely right. <laughs> yes, um... Uh, the £700 house was the one I just sold. Oh, it, it weren't a patch on this one, though. Uh, not a patch. Uh, and believe me or believe me not, there was a queue outside. Uh, of course, it was the advertisement that did it. I mean, once you put an advertisement in, you have to stay for more, you see. I mean, there's a big demand around here, you know, a big demand. Um, uh, that's right, take another look round. Uh, upstairs, if you want. You haven't advertised this one, then? Well, no, uh, I haven't got around to it yet, but... Uh, if you like the place, well, it'll save me having to cope with the rush, won't it? Well, seems, seems a lot of money. Do you know what they're paying for houses like this in London, Missus? Two to three thousand pounds. Without the word of a lie, two to three thousand pounds. Oh, it, it's shocking. It, it, it really is shocking. Mind you, I couldn't do it myself. I couldn't do it. But then, you see, I'm like that. I mean, that's what I'm like, you know. I mean, it's like my wife says, Alfred Wormold. She says, Alfred Wormold, you'll never be rich. You, you're too soft. You're altogether too soft. I'm soft, you see. I mean, that's what I am. I'm soft. You can bring it down a bit, then? Oh, no, I couldn't do that, Mrs. No, uh, no, Mrs. Uh, Ogden. No, I couldn't possibly do that. Uh, I mean, that's right. You see, uh, I know it's the practice to put a bit on to take a bit off, so to speak, but, uh, well, when I fix a price, it's a fair one. No, I couldn't possibly bring it down. Well, not more than about 25 quid, say. Now, look, Worm, we'll stop rabbiting, will you, and shut up. I knew you were going to rob me of a flaming fortune. That's your business, isn't it? But I want this house, and I can see no sense in wasting good soup in time arguing, right? But you're not going to rob me blind. Oh, now, steady, you know, old chap. Fair's fair. I'm offering you 550. If you don't like it, you can lump it. Well, um, I'll have to think about it. Uh, I'll be back in about ten minutes uh, and call the nature. Uh, tell you what, take another look round. Uh, look at the bathroom, see what you think. Uh, God bless you both. Oh, Stan, go on, pay him what he wants. I love this little house. Don't let's lose it. I've made me offer. Don't worry. We'll get it, look. Well, I must say, it's been very well cared for. Stan! Hmm? Oh, I can see it being cared for, all right. Hey, what do you think all them little holes were? It would work upstairs. As though somebody's been playing darts. Funny place to play darts, though. Ah, oh, maybe it's the kids. Hmm. Oh, when's he coming back? Oh, I can't wait to get the furniture moved in. Oh, that won't take long. We shift the whole lot on Dudley's handcart. Trevor, you mean? Oh, I can't get used to the names of this household. Um, a feeder, Dudley, Trevor, I don't know. Oh, hey, Spider. You're not going to go away again, are you? <laughs> You know, you look a little treat tonight, you do. Come here. <laughs> here, I could eat you for supper. Mm. <laughs> oh, Spider, it'll be just like starting all over again. Hey, look at them lovely fitted cupboards. Oh, heck. Where's that greasy tight worm wool? I'm here, Mr. Uh, I'm glad you noticed those, Mrs. Uh, very nice. Uh, yes, uh, custom built they were. Did they take the offer? Yes, of course. Uh, 590, weren't it? 575, and that's my last. Done. Hey, hey, aren't you going to introduce us? Elsie, this is my mum. How do you do, Mrs. Ogden? I've already met Mr. Ogden. Oh, uh, yes, he said. Uh, how about that house? Are you thinking of taking it, then? Oh, uh, yes, we are, aren't oh. we, Frida? Well, uh, here's to it. I, um, I wish you luck. Thank you. Oh, uh, my name's Statlock. Uh, can I buy another one of them? Oh, uh, well, no, thanks. Not just at the moment. Uh, do you mind if I sit down? Me feet feel like pudding. Right, well, come and sit down here, love. Ta. Next to me. You're right here. Right, well, I don't know what you're worrying about them for. They'll be perfectly all right. They'll fit in here like a glove. Will they? You've not met the Ogdens, Elsie. There's more to come to this combination, and believe me, when they get going, this street will be like Margate on a bank holiday. Elsie, come up! I've got something to say to you. What was that, love? What was you doing all night with my stand? 
You've better have done that, haven't you? I'm asking you. You had it all worked out in your wicked scheming little mind, haven't you? Mrs. Ogden, I don't... Well, if you're a drive family, you said, then you go and fix your car so you can get your clothes into him. I know your sort. Your Stan could have very easily come home, Mrs. Ogden, if he'd wanted to. If he... Are you suggesting that my Stan... Ooh, there's a word for people like you. You never have been able to keep a fellow all to yourself, have you? So you get your own back by trying to pinch everybody else's. Well, I'll tell you one thing, madam, you're not having mine. Would you mind repeating that again? Oh, Shut sure up, you. Just repeat that again. I don't boil my cabbages twice. Not unless you're going deaf in your old age. I might be old, Mrs. Ogden, but I'm not that old I have to scrape the bottom of the barrel. And what do you mean by that? That I have to go chasing after great lumps of lard like your husband. What's wrong with my husband? You've got eyes, haven't you? If he's good enough for me, he's good enough for you. Ah, but just one thing, Mrs. Ogden, I happen to have a bit better taste than you have. Oh, have you? Well, at least I've had the taste to stick with one man and not go chasing after every other fellow from here to Kingdom Come. I should think the reason for that is obvious. What's that? Has any other fella ever looked twice at you? Does this happen often? Uh, only every three days. It's a men's free-for-all on Sunday. Sort of local custom, you might say. Thank you, Mr. Ogden. Hello, Mr. Thank Walker. you, and good night to you. Good evening. <laughs> Children are such a problem, aren't they? No matter how old they get. What do you mean by that? Go on, what did you mean? Just that children are a problem. Meaning our Irma? If the cat fits... You've never stopped thinking about our Irma ever since you found out where she was going tonight, have you? Oh, you've tried to hide it, doing your landlady act, but I've seen you glancing at us. Tittle-tattle written in big letters right across your eyeballs. <laughs> Irma does. It's her own business, you know. It's not her fault she's attractive and fellas want to take her out. I've never heard that fella was ever queuing up to take your daughter out. And why? Because she's like her mother, that's why. Got a face like a pan scrubber. So you just mind your own business. You're not suggesting that I provoke that outburst as well, surely? Of course you did. And if I had you in that street, you'd get a leather in too. Hello, Chuck. What kind of a morning? Oh, all right. I got you a nice steak and kidney pie. Smashing. Well, it wasn't all right, really. I smashed a, a, a pane in Gladstone Terrace had to go and fix it. Ah, oh, you never. I put my ladder to it. Only a small one, but it took an hour before I fetched it. Perhaps you shouldn't have bothered going at all, Stan. It must be very hard to concentrate. There you are. Went right down Rosamond Street for that, cos they're nicer. I don't know. You live with them, you drink with them, they turn their backs on you. What have I ever done to them? Ah, oh, don't chuck. Aren't you having any dinner? No, I'm not hungry. I don't think I am, really. Oh. I wouldn't mind a drink, though. Hey, you're not going near Annie Walker's? No, no, no. No. What a swines they are. What are we going to do? We've got to live here. Yeah? We'll just ignore them, Stan. You can't ignore them, though, when you know what they're thinking about you. Yeah? Don't know how I walked down that flipping street this morning. You just hold your head up, Chuck, and spit in their eye for them. I can't, love. Well, I can. I could spit in their eye. That Billy Walker's the one, you know, like his mother, I and Mighty. Oh, I've a good mind to go down there now and tell him what I think about no, it. No, love. Why not? It'll do no good. It'll do me good. No, love. Listen, they started it. I'll just show them who they're calling. They weren't calling you. I was called a liar to me face when I said about that peeping Tom having a go at me. I'm going down there, Stan. I'll wipe that Billy Walker's eye for him. No. Listen, I'm not sitting here gormless after what they've done to you. You'll cause a scene. Two flaming right, I will. Well. Right. I've got a few things to say to certain people in here. And before I leave, by God, you'll hear me. Mrs Ogden, I must ask you to leave these premises. I'm not leaving here, Annie Walker, until I've told you what I think about you. Call Billy. Call him, call him. I'm here for his benefit. And you, Langton, and one or two more of you. All right, Beth. You're a bunch of filthy scum, the lot of you. Scum! There's not one of you fit to lick my Sam's boots. Well, I'm not going to say it twice, Hilda. Out. And you, Billy Walker, you can talk about peeping toms. Cos I've seen some of the filthy books you read with pictures of girls in them with now Tom showing the lot. Aye, you didn't know about that, did you? Well, it's very funny you're so quick to point the blame. Maybe I know why. I can't you out. You try it and I'll have your eyes out. Any road you needn't bother, I'm going. By heck, a, a maggot wouldn't stop here with you like you. You're like a disease. I've just got one thing to say before I go. Man. Oh, he sent me off your husband. Oh, did he? Yeah, insisted. Oh, very nice. Oh, I'm glad you approve. Mind, it's not everybody's cup of tea. No? Oh, nothing personal, of course. <laughs> of course. No, but it's, uh, 
Well, it's not in keeping, is it? In keeping with what? This street. Like trying to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. Oh, no, I agree with Stan. You know, you might as well keep your money in the bank. I mean, as for installing folder rolls like pink <laughs> bathroom suites. Yeah, well, like I said, everybody to his taste. Do you know, Ola, that's the first sensible thing you've said yet. This is to my taste, and I see nothing wrong in making the place where you live look nicer if you can. Ah, well, you wasn't always of that persuasion, though, was you? I can remember when this place was like a... Like a what? Well, um, shabby, shall we say? Well, it's not shabby now. And might I add, it's a darn sight better than a lot of middens round this street. I hope you're not referring to mine. If the cat fits, wear it. What about all them alterations my stand did last year? What alterations? Well, like, uh, like a serving hatch. Serving hatch? There was a flaming barn door. Yeah, and that's not a flipping bath. It's phonographic, is that? Well, at least I won't be keeping coal in it, will I? No, you'll be keeping some grannier than coal in it. Yourself. Now, listen to me, Spiky Bones. You watch your tongue. This is my house. What difference does that make? I'll show you what difference. Get out! Hello. Have a nice little chat, are we? What about Amapola? Uh, no, I don't oh, think it used so. to be one of my favourite songs, did that, you know? I won a prize for singing it once. It was in a boarding house in Blackpool. It was raining and everybody chipped in and we had a bit of a sing-song. I won five craven, eh? I'm a pole is not listen. quite my... You just listen. I'm a pole, the pretty little puppy. This is all. Oh, well, I'm uh, sorry, Mr. Lewis. I was uh, just giving Rita here some idea of what the public wants. Mrs. Ogden, I only hope that nobody who was passing planned to pay us a visit tonight. Because if they did, we've just lost their patronage. But didn't you like it? Sounded like Mick Jagger stuck up the plumbing somewhere. Hey, I thought you were interested in that sideboard of Maggie Clegg's. I am, what? Well, I've just seen Mr. and Mrs. Ogden with it halfway to their front door. They've never, it's mine. It'll take them a long time to get it there. Stan has to keep stopping for a rest every other centimetre. <laughs> Betty, have you sold that sideboard to Elder Ogden? No. Right. I'll soon sort Elder Ogden out. Come on, then, there might be a fight. I wouldn't be surprised. You're not off that sideboard by the time I can't free. I'll sling you. Try it. Well, yeah, get out of the way. Come on. Now, come on, look, Hilda, we'll have no violence. She's only bluffing, Jerry. She could no more throw me off here than fly. We'll see if I'm bluffing well, I or said not. That's enough of that, Hilda. But don't just claim and stand there. You push her off. Go on. Well, no, go on, Stan. Not so much a push as a, a shove and an eve, like, you, you know. do, Jerry Booth. Go on, Stan, you've got every right. It is our property. It is not your property. Oh, yes, it is. I paid for it. Two fifty to Betty Turpin. She says not. Well, she's a liar, then. It's you, the liar. Don't need his warm corner off someone else. I'm trying to get some sleep up, yeah? They'll talk you, you Welsh rabbit. Oh, charming. Half for the last time. Get off my sideboard. My sideboard? Right, Stanley, go and ring the police. It's the only way. Police? That's a bit steep, isn't it? Well, I'll go then. No, look, hang on a minute, Hilda. Let's discuss this in a sensible matter. Now, as far as I see, you, you reckon that Mrs. Turpin sold you sideboard? Yeah, for 2 50 Rubbish! Here, here. What do you know about it? Nothing. Well, you can keep your gob shut and all, then. You know, that's why I come to live round here. I knew I could bank on a very high standard no, look, of look, repartee. Look, but are you saying, then, that Mrs. Turpin sold it to you? Not exactly. There you are. But what I do know is that she never sold it to her. Yeah, well, look, isn't the simplest thing to see Mrs. Turpin? She would seem to be the arbiter in this matter. The what? The, the arbiter, the judge, referee. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, you never was able to talk the Queen's English, was you, Hilda? No, she just shouts it, top of her flaming voice. <laughs> she wouldn't hear it, siren it was. Right, Betty, stop talking. Come on, 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 Come I mean, two grown women acting like a, like a, acting like a couple of alley cats over a bit of cheap furniture. Now, come on, look, we'll go, we'll go and see Mrs. Turpin and get this sorted no, out in a civilised no, no. manner. I reckon they should fight for it. Three rounds with handbags. You should have liked them. Right. Right. Come on. I don't Elder. mind. I know I'm in the right. Who's going to look after it? Inside, boy. I will. Not on your Nelly Langton. Yeah. You watch Oggy don't whip it inside as soon as my back's turned. Come on, come on, Bucky. Oh, right. Alice, we've got to get this off that one. Yeah. All right, come on, you lot. The show's over. Brush off. Hey. Slip as a quid and I'll wander off. I haven't got any money. Pity. Oh, I'm going. You're mad as at us.
Hey, what are them two loonies doing with that ladder? Come on, Jerry. Jerry, you're sick of Mrs. Turpin, will you please decide which one of these two owns that rotten sideboard stuck out there? Well, now, did I pay you 250 or didn't I? Well, not you left it on the bar. Same thing. Did you actually take her money, Betty? No, I didn't. She left it here. And Mrs. Walker put it in a glass near the till. Then there were no sale. And I say the word of And I say the word. This is a quiet pub, not a flipping cat's hole. Yeah, shut your gob and let us sup in peace. Don't blame me. Blame her. Oh, she means the other way about. Elizabeth, Beth, could I have a word with you, please? Hey, now, no secret deals. I'm not having that. No oh, chance. Oh, shut up. Don't you think it's rather undignified arguing with Mrs. Ogden like that in public? I thought you were both too good manners to sink to her level, because that's what you're doing, and especially you bet. But now you'll go to that woman and tell her she can have that sideboard and that it is not worth another second of argy-bargy. Either that or you put your coat on and leave, and I'll post your cards on to you. While you are in my house, you will adhere to my standards. It's up to you, love. You can stick your flipping sideboard. Does that mean I can have it? Right. And I want a receipt off you and all, Betty Turpin. So, somebody had to step down, Bet. Somebody always does. Mrs. Walker? This year we're not the sun is fine. I think I'll ask that year. I didn't think I'd have you in green. Shut up, Hildy. You're spoiling your image. <laughs> hey, Stan! Did you know fish knives is common? Cos they are the very non-you. Fish knives, they're common as muck. I'm glad we haven't got any. Any fish knives? We haven't got any. No, I know, but Annie Walker has, and they're very non-you. I'm not with you. Oh, never you mind, Chuck. You just concentrate on what you've got to do. What? Well, your husband opens the door, it says, then you shake hands and say to the women, would you like to go upstairs? Eh? You will find my wife's bedroom if you turn left on the top landing. You got that round the right way? Yeah, and then when the guests are assembled, you say, come into the sitting room, and I exclaim, how lovely to see you. Ah, I want to put my lino down. Yeah, well, you better get cracking. Huh. I don't know what you wanted to take the floorboards up for in the first place. I had to level the floor, didn't I? Mm. I bet Barbara Cartland never has all this trouble. She hasn't got three layers of liner when I order come up. No, she's got a butler. Oh, they live in a different world. Can I get on? Yeah. Here, yeah. why didn't you just put the vinyl down on top of the old liner? Because if I had, your guests couldn't assemble, could they? They couldn't open the flipping door, could they? Oh, well, it's only me. Oh, what can we do for you, Elder? Well, uh, actually, it's Lucille I've come to see as much as anybody. Oh, aye. Yeah, you've still got your gramophone, have you? You mean my record player? Yeah. Uh, would you give us a lend of it, you know, for them as wants to dance like? Oh, all right, if you're careful. I'll talk it. I'll send Stan round to fetch it. Mm. <laughs> oh, and uh, you two haven't uh, RSVP'd yet, have you? RSV? Oh, the party! Oh! oh. Uh, I'm sorry, Hilda, but we have a... Uh, well, prior engagement. Yeah, oh, and... Have you? Yes, and we're, we're, we can't get out of it, y you know. Oh, I see. What's that, then? Well, it's... Well, it's, it's one of these motor trade do's. Oh, I see. It's the Shark annual dinner. How do you mean, Shark? It's the uh, Second-Hand Automobile Retailers Club. Club spelled with a K. Oh, it's I a bit see. boring, you know, but it's a necessity. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a pity for you, really, cos you'll miss the eggs in aspic. The what? Eggs in aspic, you know, for the horse stovers. Oh, get away. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, you wouldn't happen to have some aspic handy, would you? Only I've run out. Elder, I don't think I even know what they look like. No. No, well, there's a lot that don't. I'll just have to go into town, that's all. <laughs> well, uh, don't let us keep you, Elder. Oh, no, no, I'd better get cracking. <laughs> Ta-ra, then. <laughs> Here we are. Ta-ra. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps we should go, shouldn't we? Oh, you must be kidding. Oh. Hey, where is eggs in aspic? <laughs> I don't think Hilda's very clear herself. <laughs> no, uh, can, you, can you jump over that? Jump? Oh, well, wait, so the glue's not dry yet. You can walk on it, can't you? No, 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 it'll squeeze out the side, you know. It's managed, can't you? Good chance. Right. You're all right, Lou. <laughs> Go on. <clears throat> yeah. Well, what about that, then, eh? Oh, it's very nice. It's very posh. All my own work. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell. Well, going in there, Hilda's in there. Oh, oh hello, it's you. Yeah. We brought the official portrait. Oh, hey, oh, my hands is all sticky. Stan, come and have a look, it's the picture. Shall we look at it? Hey, that's smashing. Yeah, I flatter myself it is. Lord Snowden could hardly do better. Here, let's have a look, take your gluey hands off. 
Oh, wow. Good, isn't it? It's fantastic. You look just like Ronald Coleman, Stan. Uh, I think you look absolutely regal, Hilda. Uh, let's have a look at the rest, then. Well, there is the question of the fee. Uh, we did say five pounds, didn't we? Oh, well, I'm, I'm going on my now. Well, perhaps I'd better bring him back when it's more convenient, then. Oh, no, we can let you have some at down. Stan, there's a pound in my purse. Uh, and the rest. And I, I don't wish to appear grasping. But Ernest but, uh, did sweat tears of blood over those portraits. Oh, I can see that. Look, here, you are. Take, take that and... Uh, can we pay him 50 a week, you think? Well... It'll uh, do you a lot of good, will this, you know? Will it? <gasps> when they see that, set on our mantelpiece. At the oh. party, it'll be an advertisement for you. I can see Annie Walker begging you for one like that. Hey, you're a flaming genius. Uh, how are going on, right? Well, the left one's all right. What, this one? No, no, the other one. Oh. Luke, take it off and stick it back on again. Yeah, right. Oh. Put plenty on. Yeah. Oh, aren't they fiddling, Mr. Fane? Yeah, Hilda. <gasps> oh, hey, smashing. Oh, yeah. Oh, makes the ensemble, doesn't it? Oh, it sets off the necklace and the earrings. You only need a tiara now. <laughs> Hilda, you don't think it's just a tiny bit too much? Oh, no. No, now, if it were an informal lunch party, I might agree with you. But uh, the clothes should mark the occasion, Barbara Cartland says. <laughs> Are you fit, Chuck? Yeah, nearly. Good. What's wrong with your eye? Oh, I haven't got my eyelash on. Come here, there's a spot on that tie. Oh, you make a show me, you would. Listen, you've got cards down the table with names on, haven't you? Yeah, well, that's the way it's done, Stanley. Who's this Edward L? Oh, that's my colleague at work, Mr Loftus. Oh, I'm in Ted. Yeah. Now, you better get back downstairs and see if anybody's coming. Yeah. Right. Hey, Stan, don't you look fantastic, eh? Oh, very nice, yeah. <laughs> you know, he wouldn't bat an eyelid if I were woed him. Somebody's here. Well, go and let him in. No, not yet. Wait, wait. I've got to be in the sitting room. Well, Oreo. Hiya. That all right? That'll yeah. do, will do, yeah. Yeah, right. Ta. Go on, love. <clears throat> You'll slay him. Thank you, Stanley. <laughs> now then, Stan, you bring him in and introduce him. Be a normal. Well, just bring him in then. Go on. Right. Hello. Uh, can, you, can you squeeze through there? A bit jammed in the line. <laughs> nice here. to see you. Can you manage, love? Oh, yes. Right. Oh, Jerry, Annie. Hello, sir. Uh, oh, here you are. Oh, for thanks the, uh, very much. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Would you like to go upstairs, Mrs. C? What for? I don't know. No, I don't think I'll bother. Right, well, come on in here then. Here they are. Lovely to see you. Uh, I brought you these. Oh, thank you, Edward. How lovely. Oh, Mrs. Colwell. How lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, just a bit of a present, Mrs. Oh, Jelly. How lovely to see you. Okay. Uh, here's another one. Oh, uh, I haven't bought you a prezzy. Mr. Ogden only invited me this afternoon. Oh, how lovely to see you. Oh, there you are. I thought you were skiving. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, come and lend us hand, Chuck. Keep the party flowing. Oh, right, right. And remember, talk to people, Stan. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, we're the floor. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> he reminds me of Kelly. <laughs> of course. 
It's a forgotten era, isn't it? Not down the light over Wednesday night, it's not. <laughs> I'm sure I've seen the yeah, film with this. I suppose this is old to you, very new fan. She moves all right, though, doesn't she? No, 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 no. Yeah, a bit like a camel with rubber legs. <laughs> hey, I heard that. Come on, Jerry, do you do this? Uh, well, no, I've got several left feet myself. Hey, on a funny face. Just She's been with the fellas, isn't it? Oh, well, come on. <laughs> I am not going to be driven out of my own home. We weren't invited, you know. Yeah, this is going to go on our flaming night. Well, you want to go round? You must be joking. Oh, hey, I recognise that thump. Oh, they can bang away all they like. According to them, they're not in. It's no good, you're not in. <laughs> hey, she's a lovely woman. Hey, Jean Kelly, watch it. Are you excusing me, Miss? I Lester? just said, watch it. You? Right, right. Well, would you care? Are you all right? Oh, I can feel romance in here. The Ogden's Alf are rather like a crossword. <laughs> One can enjoy oneself working out what they mean. But it's such a dreadful waste of time. That's right. Oh, there's no to put me knees. Well, as long as you can lay your hands on the table, it doesn't matter. <laughs> What do we do now? I'll tell you what you do. First thing, empty your mind. Oh, not a big job. Now, Luke, either you're serious about this or you're not. If you're not... Oh, I'm sorry. You see, your minds is full of day-to-day -day clutter. You'll get nothing through that. It's like when you get interference on the radio. So, you switch off, right? Right. Now, I'm like a radio what can tune in, but only in certain circumstances. I don't think it's easy. Because if anybody's got a septic attitude, it sort of puts up an obstacle lag. Now then, hands on the table. Very lightly, just touching. Just fingertip. Oh, now, don't hold her hand, Chuck. Well, I'm frightened. What if somebody comes? Well, it's quite natural to be frightened, but really, there's no need. Now then, just touching. Right. Is there anybody there? Is there anybody there who wishes to speak to anybody here? Give a sign. Who's that? Stan going to the car, so we'll have to wait. <sighs> Join hands. Start together. We wish to speak to someone on the other side. Is there anybody there on the other side? Hey? We wish to communicate with someone on the other side. What are you going to ask? Ask for a name. What is your name on the other side? What is your name? Oh, Arthur. Arthur. She said Arthur. He said Arthur. It can't be Arthur. Why not? Is your name Arthur? Oh, I don't think it can be. Arthur. Hey, she said Arthur. Arthur. It might be a book writer what's passed on. We don't know any book writers round here. You can get anything. Red Indians or anything. <laughs> Elsie, ask a question. You ask it. Well, has nobody got a question to ask? My name is Arafa. You have disturbed me. 
Why? You are not earnest in your heart. Nobody here wishes to speak to you. Not even my mum. <laughs> Oh, come on. Oh, Hilda. Put light on. Hilda, come on, Hilda. Come on, Hilda, love. Snap out Hilda, of it. Hilda, don't look about. She is in a flaming trance. Hey, I've heard it can be dangerous. Pinch her, Elsie. What have you put light on for? It's broad daylight out here. Oh, what happened? Anything? I think we got told off. I think we just had us leg pulled, didn't we, Hilda? What, what, happened, what happened to my table? Do you really not know? Oh, no, my arm hurts. Yeah, well, I had to pinch you to, to bring you round, like. Oh, so very much. Table went down with a right crash. It jerked right up first. Well, I wouldn't swear it jerked right up. Somebody kicked the table leg. That's what happened. Well, I didn't. And I just hope it was one of you lot. Oh, I feel all drained. Did you get any message from the other side? Mm. Well, I got a message, I think. What? Well, in fact, I think we all got a message. Either it's a load of hooey... Or it's something that you don't mess around with. Well, I felt something spooky. Felt it in the atmosphere. You feel something spooky now, louder. Well, it's definitely time for a cup of tea. Definitely. Hey, come on, Hilda. Tell us. You didn't know what was going on all the time, didn't you? Look, if I'd known you was pinching me like that, I'd have give you a belt. Yeah. I reckon you would. Still, I'm not convinced. Ah, thanks, love. Come and get your breakfast. Oh, I'm not bothering. Oh, come on. Since when have you been so concerned about whether I have my breakfast or not? It's a long time. I mean, you don't eat, you're going to eat skin and bone, aren't you? I am skin and bone. Sit you down. What's up with you? Do you want your bread buttering or something? <sighs> oh, Stan. <coughs> Serves me right. I thought you hadn't remembered. Of course I had. Ah, oh, Chuck. Happy birthday from your ever-loving husband, Stan. <sighs> well, you don't always. What? Remember. If I don't remember, it's because of pressure of business. Yeah. Yeah, I know, Chuck. I know you've got a lot to think about. I wasn't going to mention it, you know, I mean, with us having such a run of bad luck and that. I was going to give up birthdays. Don't be daft. Can't go on forever. Oh, uh, this came as well. Oh, hey, that's got a stamp on. Ah, oh, well, I didn't post mine. See, you, you can't trust the post these days, can you? Oh, bless them. Oh, ain't that lovely? With love and every good wish for a smashing birthday from Trevor, Polly, Damien and baby Jane. Oh, of course, that's her, you know. She's a very nice girl. How uh, do you know it wasn't him? Oh, well, if Trevor had sent it, he wouldn't have put his own name first. He's got better manners, he'd have put hers. And he wrote it's not his writing. Look, Chuck, isn't it lovely? Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, I say. Oh, aren't they good? Uh, yeah. Do you know what, Chuck? I think our look's changing. And it's ever since we decided to change the numbers on that front door. Oh, we should have known, you know. I mean, me, with my perceptation, living in number 13 and not bothering. <laughs> Here, we'll have to get this fixed up legal. Now, it's post office and town hall for you this morning, my lado. Right? Right. You just see. A new chapter's going to get itself wrote in the history of the Ogdens. And not before time. Hey, uh, you all right, lad? I've got something on my mind. Yes, you haven't got your hat on, love. And it can't be out else. <laughs> oh, full of comedians, aren't we? Our elder wants a number changing on our doors. So I've got to go to the post office and the town hall. I'm planning my campaign. Post office and town hall. Look no further. Alf runs both of them. Oh, ah, you know what goes on, don't you? Yeah, well, I know you don't have to go to the post office. What you have to do, you have to, go to make an application to the engineer's department, tell them what you want and why, and then it goes before the highways committee. By gum, it's your lucky day. Our friends, the highways committee, and all. What have I ever done to you? Well, that could be the reason. <laughs> hey, Sarah, you on the highways committee? Yeah, yeah, Stan, look, I promise that when your application comes through, I'll vote for you. Cross me out. Ah, great. Have a drink. Happy birthday. How did you know? No secret.
you say from Gail Potter, girl detective? Well, you can ask me and it's perishing. Oh, yeah, come on through. Uh, I don't know if you like chocolates, but if you do, happy birthday. And if you don't, there's nothing lost, because I bought the ones I like. Oh, how lovely. Do you know, it's funny that. Stan was only saying this morning I was going to skin and bone. Happen these will fatten me up a bit. <laughs> And might I say, I don't believe all I hear about the younger end. You can show your elders up when you try. I mean, there's Elsie Tanner lived next door to me since the year dot. You could snuff it for all she cares. Do you know, she wouldn't lift a finger. She paid half towards them. Oh. Oh, well, uh, will you thank her on my behalf? <laughs> Must be improving in her old age. I'll tell her that. Oh, no, no, just, just thank her. And thank you again. Pleasure. Hey, uh, did I see Stan out there when I let you in? Yeah. What's he doing? I've not to say. Oh, up to his tricks again, is he? Well, uh, if he's still there, will you tell him his dinner's nearly ready? Yeah. Smells good and all. Ah, so it should. Like a lamb. Like a lamb? Oh, only a little one. Well, I mean, it's like eating gold, isn't it? <laughs> still, it is my birthday. Can't be miserable all your life, can you? Well, I'll tell him. Right, tell. Tell, tell. Elder! I'm in here! Elder! Come here, I've got something to show you. What? Come here. Well, what do you think? Well, what do I think, what? The door. Oh, Stan. Twelve, eh? Oh, aren't they smart? Where did you get them? What is? They had black ones, but I thought you'd rather have brass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're very nice, then. Very nice indeed, Jack. Ah. <laughs> I'll give us your key. Yeah. Holding me old trousers. How many got yours? What, in my pinny pocket? Don't talk to Aft. Back door open. With our luck, what do you think? <sighs> well, Stanley, it's another fine mess you've got me into. I've told you to me other cakes. Oh, you. Oh, here, hang on. We used to keep one on top of the door. No, not now. Well, Luke. No, oh, that won't be there. You told me to move it when they broke in the rovers. It's under the plant pot in the front room. Oh, very handy. All right, trying to knock it down, are you? Oh, I'm thinking of knocking him down. He's got us locked out. Oh, well, it happens to the best of us, doesn't it? Here, tell you what, let me have a go with my key. Oh. You never know, you lock. No, no good. Try yours. Same as yours. Try yours. No. No, I tell you what. I'll see if Eddie's in the pub. He'll get you in. He got me and Trisha in once. Ah, uh, he got me in once and all, and I knew nowt about it. Not a bad idea, that, you know. About time somewhat useful come out of that fat lump. Which is more than you can expect from every fat lump. What are you doing, hypnotising it? I'm thinking, aren't I? Oh, don't you think we're in enough trouble? He's not in there, he's not in the cabin. Ooh, he wouldn't be, would he? Where's Elsie? Round the back, trying to spot a way in. While well, the mad marvel here tries to mesmerise the door open. I'm told you, I'm thinking. Thinking. Well, there's no doing round there. There's a lovely smell coming through the keyhole, but nobody's doing out much about it. Smell? Oh, me like a lamb. Oh, so help me, Stanley, I'll swing for it's you. It's not my fault. But where's that spare key? Under the plant pot. In the windowsill? Aye. Put your elbow through the glass. Hey. Go on, I'll put your head through in a minute. Oh. Go on, you daft aper. <laughs> it's too far. Give me strength. Come out the way, you fat head. Go on. Oh. It's our house. Oh, uh, I'll vouch for that. Ah, now, don't you just stand there. Do something. May I ask what you're trying to do, exactly? Look, there's a spare key under a plant pot inside there. We're locked out. You do surprise me. It's just across this side, if you can reach. Ah, oh, eh? Oh, he's coming. Oh, well, madam. And if the opportunity arises, perhaps you'll... Put in a good word for the police. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> I know. Now, you stay where you are. If that leg of lamb's ruined, I'm liable to stuff the whole lot down your throat, bones and all. Oh, no! I can't stand violence. 
Ralph said she wouldn't have minded, only legs of lamb don't grow on trees. Do you know what she wants to do, Stan? She wants to get herself a freezer and take you down to Willie Piggott's and have you cut up, cos I reckon there's enough on you to last her two years. <laughs> Juicy and all. Get off. Well, we've all to make sacrifices. Where's the birthday girl, then? Well, she's got a headache. Do you wonder? Give her that with best wishes from an anonymous admirer. What anonymous admirer? Me. Uh, don't open it now, you'll have Mrs Walker jealous. Tell her to take it home and enjoy it in front of her own fireside. Uh, Thanks very much. And next time she comes in, tell Mrs Ogden to have a drink on me. Oh, thanks. Uh, I'll just have a pint. And a pint for Mr Ogden. I said bring the gate back up. Why don't you change those numbers? Well, don't push your luck, Stam. She's got a leg of lamb like a lump of lead, a broken window and a blinding headache. And a fiver from our Trevor. Which it'll cost to put in a pane of glass. Like she said, don't push your luck. Yeah. There's only one consolation, Stanley. Things can only get better. I won't bet on that. Who said you could change your number? You did. You said it was all right. I said I'd vote for you. I didn't say the others would. You know what you've done changing your number? You've offended against the Towns Improvement Clauses Act of 1847. Yes, yeah, sir. Oh, hey, it's hanging job, that, at Firing Squad, wasn't it, too? Ah, well, anyway, it's liable for prosecution and a fine. You want to get them numbers changed back again before anybody notices? Life's not worth living, is it? I don't know, Stan. It is Hilda's birthday, isn't it? Yeah. And she has something to be thankful for. What? She's got you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who the heck can that be? It'll be Wendy coming back. She can't live without you. I don't see it's her husband. He's away. Easy yourself. I'm sure I heard his voice. What's up? This is Ross Stanley. I thought you'd been doing that for years. Well, not lose him. Murder him. Wouldn't want him driving some other poor woman by me. I don't want that on my conscience. Here we Was he still in the pub when you left? Yeah, 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 sure he was, definitely, yeah. He was talking to Betty Turpin. Yeah, well, perhaps he's still talking to Betty Turpin. No, he's not. I've been to the Rovers. He'll be down at the Legion, though, won't he? They do bed and breakfast there. But he said he'd be home in half an hour. I had his supper ready. Oh, aye. Oh, I hope nothing's happened to him. Like what? Well, I don't know. He's not all that strong, you know. All them tests he had were never properly concluded. But when I asked Betty where he went to, she probably know. How? We'll give her a ring. She won't be in bed yet. It's double two, double seven. Want me to get it for you? Oh, if you would, Ken. Thank you very much. He's not got that much money on him, neither. A quid at the most. You know, for somebody who wants to murder him, you're doing a lot of worrying about him. Yeah, well, you never appreciate a gammy leg till you've lost it, do you? Not her, Betty. It's Ken here. Um, the, hang on a minute. I've got Hilda for you. Hilda Ogden, what does she want this time of night? Hello, is that you, Betty? Who do you think it is? A speaking flipping clock? You don't know where my stan is, do you? Your stan? Why should I know where your stan is? Well, apparently, we're last seen talking to you in the Rovers. Hey, what are you suggesting, Hilda Ogden? Suggesting? Nothing, nothing at all. Yes, you are. You're suggesting that your stan's here with me. Oh, I'm doing no such thing. Listen to me, Hilda Ogden. Your stan wouldn't get over my doorstep, not even for the kiss of flaming life. Why don't you try Inkerman Street? I mean, that's where he usually does his playing out these days. Inkerman Street. Eh? She reckons it could be round at Inkerman Street. Well, it could be. Flaming rotten 19 Inkerman Street. going on? Have you got loony or something? Is my husband in there? I don't know. I don't know your bloody husband, do I? Stanley Ogden! Stanley who? Ogden! Stanley Ogden! She's going on about some geezer called Stanley Ogden. Hey! Who are you talking to in there? Shut up, will you? And I'll come down and put me foot in your gob. Uh, say that again. I've got a message for you, love, from the lady of the house. To some lady. She says she hasn't seen that big, fat pig of a husband of yours for weeks. He hasn't even been round to clean her windows. Does she expect me to believe that? Look, I know he's in there. Well, see if you believe me, then, love. If he were in here, he'd be groaning a lot and bleeding a lot, take my word. 
because I'm living here now and I don't go much for sharing with big fat pigs. So bug off before I do come down and clatter you. Well, not a bad night, is it? The time of year. This isn't a dream I'm having, is it, Mrs. Ogden? A bad dream? Because you couldn't possibly be knocking on my front door. Why, well, whatever's the matter? It's my stand, Mrs. Walker. He's never come home. I I'm just nipping down the police station to report him missing, so I'll be a bit late coming in. But what could have happened to Mr. Ogden? Well, I don't know. Anything and everything, I suppose. Dear, has he ever been missing for a whole night before? Oh, not all night, no. Well, once or twice, perhaps. Maybe half a dozen times, when he's been boiled and not known where he was, you know. But not for a long time, six months at least. And you don't think that could have happened last night? Well, he said he was coming home for his supper. Standing there he was. Stan! Stan! Oh, shut up, Alma. Go away. No, Stan, wait. I, I can hear voices. I reckon it must be morning. Who oh, cares? Well, Mrs. Walker cares. We've been down here all flipping night. Who oh, cares? Tell you what, dear. You come and have a cup of tea with me and give him a few more minutes. Well, if you think I should. I'm sure you should. Let's give him, say, half an hour to come back from wherever, as he most certainly will, really. Well, when he does, I'm going to tie his flipping tonsils to his unbiblical cord. Hey, what are you doing here so soon? Well, what are you? Hoping you'd be here soon. You couldn't lend us a couple of quick, could you? Just tell Friday, love. Don't you ever make your wage last, no. Oh, come on. Oh. Mm. Did you hear that? Yeah. What were it? Well, I, don't, I don't know. It's coming from the lavies. Hey. That is again. Hey, you don't think somebody's got in, do you, like last time? No rubbish. Well, go and see, then. You. No, you. Yes. Oh, no. Early birds, aren't you? It's coming from the lavish. You, uh, <clears throat> you don't think as though you know, like them, them two lads before. You know. If it is, we'll soon have them out. Won't yeah. we? Oh, Mrs. Walker, take some it with you. Yeah, come on. I don't know which is worse, bursting to go to lava face in any walk. Ah, oh, you'll feel better, Albert, with a pint inside you. Look, I couldn't stop another drop to save my life. Ah. It's true what they say, you know. You can have too much of a good thing. Moderation in everything. Moderation is another word for misery. I'm going to have another pint. I don't know about you. Oh, well, I'd be sick as well as bust. And why the heck did I listen to you, Ogden? Oh, shut up, Albert. Mr. Tatlock. Well, well. What have we got down here? A little devil? What's going on here? What are you doing on here? And you'd better have a good explanation. We got locked in last night. We? Morning, Mrs. Walker. Stanley Ogden! Hello, Chuck. Missed me last night. Miss you? Oh, oh, oh you then, right there. Now, oh, then, now, 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 then, Go. Don't tell me you've been taking shorts. Don't shut up. <laughs> and you can leave that here, Mr. Oh, Ogden. Right. Oh. Some folk will do out for a drink. Oh. Hey, you want flogging? Oh, wait, 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 wait. oh shut it's up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> me wouldn't sick on that, you down here. Oh. Saw yourself daft. You're not fit to be on earth. Oh, Mr. Ogden. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. And all the time you was down there, happy as Larry, you and that old age yobbo. We got locked in. Locked in? Aye, maybe you did, Stanley. But you could have got yourselves out in a jiffy if you'd had a mind to. But you didn't have a mind to, did you? It was like you'd landed in paradise, wasn't it, being locked in a pub cellar all night? Who I can just see the smile on your face now, like flipping Coco the clown. But did you never, not even for a minute, spare a thought for me, sat here waiting for you to come home? It got out of hand, didn't it? We didn't know we were going to be there all night. It wasn't very comfortable. Oh, once down there, you was down there for the night, no danger. Look, it's over now, and no one's got hurt. I got hurt, Stanley. I got shown up. Again. You know what they're all saying out there, do you? Everybody for miles. Heard about the Ogden's latest escapade, they're saying, and then they have a good laugh at you. And when they're laughing at you, they're laughing at me. 
Look. Because we're husband and wife, Stan, and what you do rubs off on me. Don't you understand that? I've said I'm sorry. What more can I say? Nothing. I've got to get some work done, then. Eh? I haven't got a hangover, so I can't have too much, or else I'm losing a touch. Ta da! Ta da, Stan. <laughs> yes, indeed. Right. Excuse me. Yes, dear. I'm not bad, am I? No, of course not. Just Mr. Ogden. Thought I might as well get it over then. What? Showing me face in here after what's happened. I'll have a light ale, please. Yes, of course. On the house. Back it out, isn't it, Mrs. Ogden? Oh, yeah, very, Mrs. Sharples. It's done all right, Hilda. Will he have a bee, Lan? <laughs> <laughs> hey, come over here, darling. We'll all buy you one. Let's get it drunk. Oh, oh no, 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 that's a bad word of this. There are a couple of grilled over souls, what shrunk. Oh, they're pilchards, you crater. You've had pilchards before. I had them during the war. You've had them since? Not when I'm hungry. Well, when else would you eat them? Oh, snacks in between. They're not a dinner. Well, today they are. The cold. Oh, anything else? Would you like to have them weighed and measured and the photos took before you condescend to eat them? You can't give them for a dinner to a working man in the middle of February. Quite right, Stanley. I wouldn't give them to a working man. But since you don't come into that category, there's no problem, is there? Now get a net. I like someone solid. Oh, Stanley, you are somewhat solid for the neck up and down. Do you have to look at them as though they're poisoning you? You know, there's starving millions in Africa to be glad of them. Well, they can have them with my compliments. They're tasty, they're nourishing, and they're cheap. Which, since it hadn't permutated your thick skull, is the reason you're getting them. Now, when you can give me housekeeping money, what rums to rump steaks, Stanley, you can have rump steaks. You're not skint again, are you? No, but I'm down to my last five million. Well, of course I'm skint, you great chuff. What with Eddie being away and no rent coming in. And I'm down three quid on my birthday present. I bought you that. Well, I give you the money, didn't I? Well, I didn't get no change, I seem to remember. Now, just shut up and get them pills you'd set. And let me try and pretend for five minutes that you're not here. Everything oh. satisfactory? Spot on, yeah. <laughs> I was up with a barrel of beer there, I was in those spirits. Oh, everything's excellent, thank you, really excellent. <laughs> Ooh, makes your nose go funny just to look at it, doesn't it? <laughs> Madam. Oh. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and may all your troubles be little ones. Oh, it's a bit late for that. <laughs> it's never too late, madam. At least that's what I always say. Uh, oh, would you like a glass, mate? You're welcome. Oh, no, thank you, sir. I'd be skipping about like a baby fawn all night if I did. Oh. Would you like a glass, mate? Oh, it's only being matey. Eh? We're not being matey today, Stan. We're being very snooty today. Cheers again, love. Cheers. Ooh. Hey, do uh, you really think I look smashing? I said so, didn't I? Like on his first honeymoon, such as it were. Better. Mm, flatterer. <laughs> you know, I thought he looked a bit uh, skinny on his first honeymoon. You said I looked like Rita Hayworth. I never. Oh, you did. And you st kept crooning that old black magic in my ear old. Even in the car dome and in Blackpool. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, I do. I remember everything. Oh, women always do, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> Going to me head already. <laughs> still, that's the idea, isn't it? Oh, do you know, Stan? I still can't hardly believe it. <sighs> Fabulous hotel, champagne, dinner for two. Probably be prawn cocktails and all that. Oh, it's like a dream come true. I wonder who's at Rovers now. Well, whoever it is, I'll bet they were wishing they was here. Oh. Do you really think I look smashing? I said so, didn't I? Well, I feel smashing. <laughs> Don't you? I feel all right, that. Huh? Well, give us a kiss, then. Hey? You heard. Come on, you daft diaper. 
It is the second honeymoon, you know, not the first. Although, as I remember, you wasn't all that backward at coming forward then. What's that lipstick taste of? Woman, Stanley. Woman. Hello. Yes, John? Can I go to bed? Come again? Can I go to bed? I want to go to bed. Oh. It means pulling these covers back, you know. Well, of course you can, you daft taper. Right. Where do you get that? Borrowed it off Rita Fairclough. You never think so, though, would you, at Fitzfield Street? <laughs> do you like me in it? Oh, it's great. 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 All right, don't overdo it. Now then, where's the switch for this light? Oh. Oh, look. Bedside lamp. Oh, I've always wanted one of them. I could be reading me book till all hours. They're more restful, aren't they, the one in the middle of the ceiling? Oh, yes. I think we'll get us some bedside lamps, Sam. And a couple of little tables. Oh, I've learned a thing or two from this place, I can tell you. We're going to move with the times in future. This little mole is about to surface. <laughs> oh, clean sheets. Nothing nicer, is there? Here I am, Chuck. In bed, full of champagne, wine, prawn cocktail, poached salmon, chocolate mouse and a couple of bevies to top it all up. I'm a walking banquet, me. <laughs> oh, sorry, lying down banquet. <laughs> oh, what a day, though, eh, Stan? Everything just perfect. You know, I thought it might take me back to us first time, like. But it hasn't, though. Well, I mean, you can't compare this, can you, with a back bedroom on Central Drive on some fella throwing lumps of coal at a tomcat on Cludgy Roof. <laughs> Still, there are some things you might be able to compare. Aren't they, Chucky? Okay? Stan? Stan? Oh, well, you can't have everything, can you? In room 504 la -da -da -dee. It was romance, a dream come true that perfect honeymoon along with you in room 504. Sure up. This file will be out, you don't put out on it. Would you move if it was too hot? No, you wouldn't, would you? You'd just sit there and shout, Hilda, shift me, I'm burning. You what? Helpless and hopeless, that's what you are. It's fetch me, bring me, carry me, all the live long day with you. I'm only trying to be helpful. Oh, well, you could have got up, couldn't you, and stepped to the fireplace and put a bit of coal on. Ooh. See you, that is. Oh. All right, where is it? Oh, shoot. Don't crack on, you don't know what I'm here for. Well, I haven't been feeling too good lately, you know. You were right enough to come down Inkerman Street. It's two weeks since you had them clothes off of me. Who's this, then? Oh, well, it's... it's... it's uh, them. My name's Mrs Green. Ruby Green. Who are you? I'm his wife. What do you want? I want me washing. He came round to our house, said he was starting a laundry business. Pound a bag. Took it away with him. That's a fortnight since, and I'm still waiting for it. What's she talking about? Leave this to me. They're not ready yet. 
Look, I want my washing, and if I don't get it, there'll be trouble. Hmm. It's the first time I've ever heard of anybody from Inkerman Street being keen about their washing. I'll bring them round tomorrow afternoon. All You'd right. better. If you don't, there'll be another caller. My husband. Funny woman. Get in there, you. Inkerman Street. Flaming Inkerman Street. No, well, it's not like that, love. You see, I thought it was a good idea to take washing in when we had the washing machine. You see, I told you, didn't I? Yeah, you told me it was from Maudsley Street, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you again what I told you then. If you want to take him washing, all right, you do. But you'll have to wash it and all, because I'm not doing it, and that's final. Oh, Chuck. Sure. No, you want to bring home bags full of women's clothes. All right, I shan't interfere. No, listen, Chuck. Sure. You can chuck till you're blue in the face. I'm not doing it. She was. No, she was. She changed her mind. Pine, please. I don't suppose there's any danger of putting it on this late, is there? I'm sorry, my old china. Rules of the house, you see. Uh, do not ask for credit as a smack in the gob off an offence. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm sorry, my old mate. If it was up to me, the answer would be the same. No. Oh, very droll, that, Fred. Yeah, highly waggish. Sorry about that, Hilda. I was going to offer you a bottle of light, but the funds won't run to it. Oh, you're wasting your time trying to borrow money off me, Eddie Yates. Nothing was fair for me, mind. Mind you, I did come in to beg, but not for myself, for your husband. What's he done now? He hasn't done nothing. Ah, well, he's not getting no money neither, so you can just tell him that. Mrs O, your stand doesn't want money. He wants love, compassion. Sir so, Fred. I have seen that man today. He's out there, up and down his ladder, toiling away. It's brass monkey weather out there, but does he complain? No, he just keeps slogging away. And why? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why, to keep you in comfort and luxury. Luxury? I don't even know where my next bucket of coal's coming from. He doesn't say a lot, that husband of yours, Stanley. Doesn't say a lot, but he thinks the world of you, you know. The world. He only took that washing into help. No, you. now. I've told him twice already, I'm not doing it. For better the worse, Hilda. In sickness and in health. Your stand's dead sick about that washing. Yeah, well, he's wasting his time. And you're wasting yours bagging for him. I've washed my hands of him and his washing. <laughs> hmm. No, I just uh, popped in, you know. Look, this is a shop, you know, not a recreation room. Well, I can't be long. Hey, up, Stan, I think you've been spotted. Oh, well. Ah, so you're darting here. Well, have you done it yet? Oh, it takes a long time to do that washing, you know. You've had your time, cock. Two weeks of it. I've got it in hand, Mrs. Green. Honest. I hope so. For your sake. Ah, so this is where you're hiding, is it? What do you mean, hiding? I live here. Yeah, but you're not supposed to be here, are you? It's a quarter past six, Hilda. You were due at the factory at six and start clearing up. Yeah, well, I've only got one pair of hands, you know. I can't be everywhere at once. I wouldn't care, but there's no pleasure. Nothing but bed and work. Yeah, all right, all right. But the place is like a tip. I've got some buyers coming first thing in the morning, so get yourself over there, will you? Oh, all right, I'm coming. All right. Factory. Now let's get this sorted, Stanley. Half a quid as soon as you're in funds, all right? Uh, I don't know what's going to be, you know. She ought to be shot. I did my best, you know. I gave it everything I had. It was a case of uh, irresistible force meeting immovable object. This it? Oh, I wish I'd never seen it. Oh, well, don't fret. You've got me helping you now. Your troubles are over. Hey, Stan. What? This washing doesn't look very mucky to me. Hey. What? Nah. I was thinking, like, here, uh, if we put the washing in a clean bag and took it down to that woman, do you think she'd notice it hadn't been done? You know what? Don't talk wet. You saw it, didn't you? Come on, let's get cracking. 
Yeah, I suppose you're right. Right. Chug it over here. Right, come on, bung it in. Now, Elder, look, just you wait till you want to sew it. Evening. Bit late for you, isn't it? What are you doing out and about at this time? I'm just finished with cleaning at Mike Baldwin's. I'll just have a bottle to take out. No, no, give us two. I'll take one for Stan and all. You know, you're too good to that man, Hilda. Oh, I know. I spoil him rotten, really. Still, you do, don't you? If you've got one. Oh, Mr. Moo, what can I do? I've got those kind of Chinese limehouse laundry blues. Oh, Mr. Moo. What's going on? What We're doing do? the washing, aren't we? It's as good as done now. Oh, time, Mrs. O. What do you mean you're doing the washing? Well, you wouldn't do it, so Eddie and me did it. We're not helpers, you know. We're as good as the women in this game. You great fat pie cam, I've already done that washing. Three solid hours I slaved over at your great twallop. Well, how was I to know? You what? I couldn't tell you, Donny. You said you weren't going to touch it. You couldn't tell? After I'd washed it and rinsed it and dried it, I'm dying it, and you couldn't tell? Yeah, I did say it didn't look very mucky, Stan. Oh, be fair, Hilda, be fair. Now, there's no need to get upset, Mrs. O. Don't you be fair, Hilda, me. Look, if you can't tell the difference between my clean washing and dirty washing, well, you better have some practice, hadn't you? Hey, hey. Hey, you ruined me watching. Be thankful I haven't ruined you. I think that's a bit strong, Mrs. O. And as for this lot, well, you'll just have to wash it all again, won't you? Oh. You tell life that's full. I travelled each and every byway. La dee Morning, morning. Frankie oh, Baldwin. Can be resident of this parish. Oh, yeah, I've heard. Yeah, you're Mike Baldwin's dad, aren't you? Yeah, the same, the same. <laughs> what I heard just now, I'd say you must be Kate Bush. <laughs> Most people don't recognise me with my curlers in. <laughs> oh, well, something about the voice. So, this is the roof I'm trying to keep over my head, is it? Oh, well, here goes. The trip came down and somebody shouted Geronimo. Oh, look at the mess. I told you that chimney wanted sweeping. It doesn't need sweeping now. Look at me. Look oh. at the mess. Look at my dinner. Never mind your dinner. Look at me muriel. Me mountains turned into a slag heap. Are you all right? Great. I'm coming down now. Coming down? Are you going to do it then? I've done it. You can't have. There's nothing happened in here. Hey, it should have done. I dropped brick right down. Do it again. Only this time, drop the brick without the rope. Happen the rope ain't long enough. Well, come on, give us hands. I'll have to get myself cleaned up first. I heard somebody shout Geronimo. I distinctly heard a voice. Ah, you've been hearing voices for years. Hey, I wonder if there's any more to come down. I hope not. Oh, well, if at first. I reckon we've been very lucky, so. What the heck? Oh! 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 Stan! Before I go over the evidence in this case, I should like, with your lordship's permission, to dispose of one simple point of law. There we are, Mrs. O. Never let it be said that Eddie H doesn't keep his promises. What's that? This is a breakthrough in modern technology, this is. What is it? How many times have I heard you say that you wish you could see your small screen favourites in living colour? Many a time. What's it got to do with that thing? Very good, Mrs O. Straight to the heart of the matter, as per usual. This can vert your black and white telly into colour viewing right here in your own home. Yeah, well, that's where we generally do us viewing, right here in us own home. Sure, no, let him show us. Look, for a mere fraction of the cost, I attach this device on the telly like so. Here we are. Hey, presto! Coloured television. That 
That's never colour, Sally. Hey, it's blue at the top and green at the bottom. <laughs> All right for football and racing, eh? They are. What did they say, Stanley? Good as gold. It's rubbish. It's just a nasty bit of plastic with a bit of colour daub down. Daub down? Daub? Hilda, that is put on scientific. Look, a colour telly costs 250 quid. That costs a mere fraction. Couple of quid. I don't care. It's no flaming good. Yeah, but it's very reasonable for the price. All right, yeah. Oh, Luke, I don't care if it only costs two pence. It's no good and I'm not having it. Oh, give over. It's better than nout. Oh, story of my life is that. Better than nout. It'll do. Yeah, well, I've had a sickness of better than nout. You can get rid of it and yourself and all. And if you want to do me a favour, take him with you. Here, what do you call this? Where do you get that? In your jacket. What are you doing in my jacket? Well, going through your pockets, what do you think? Any road, I'm asking the questions. What do you call this? Well, it's a letter, isn't it? It's a reminder. A final reminder for the flipping water rate. Now, what's it doing in your jacket pocket? Oh, I was hiding it. They upset you. Well, of course they upset me. But don't crack on, that's why you was hiding it. Oh, no. If there's any consideration knocking about, it's for yourself, not for me. Cos you know I'll be on at you to shift yourself and get out and earn some money to pay the damn thing. That's criminal, is that? Oh, I know it is. They're criminal, you're born idle and I'm stuck in the middle. Well, come on, say something. What? Oh, like, how do we get the money to pay this flipping bill? Well, there'll be money due for the window cleaning, won't there? Well, go out and get it, then. On the bank holiday? You can't go around knocking at people's doors asking for money on a bank holiday. But you'll stand a fat chance of getting it after they've been to the pub, won't you? Now, can we cover this with what's owing? I suppose so. Hmm. Nobody around here gives us tick, do they? Do they, hackers like? They just batter at us till they get their money. Ah, well, you can do a bit of battering for a change, right? I suppose so. Ooh, I suppose so, I suppose so. It's a trouble with you, you're too damn suppository. Now, get out there and insert yourself. That's all right. Oh, what for? Frightening the dogs? Oh, no. No, there's only one thing for it. I should just have to save up and buy myself a new raincoat, that's all. Well, cost to bother to now, you know, Max. Well, what am I supposed to do? Come in like a drowned rat when it's pouring down? Oh, don't worry. It'll be no skin off your nose. I'll take it out of my Christmas money. Well, you can't touch the Christmas money yet. Why not? Well, you can't. I mean, that's for all the extras at Christmas. Oh, we'll manage. They'll put that on my gravestone, won't they? She didn't look much or weigh much, and she didn't expect much, but she always managed. Look, I'll tell you what. Wait till the weekend. I'll get some extra windows in, and I'll buy you a new Mac. Why? Well, you say I don't buy you out now. It's my chance. You've been up to summer, haven't you? I can tell by the look on your face. Look, I said I'd buy you a Mac. When I want to do a good turn, you won't let me. And you know why, don't you? Oh. Cos every time you want to do me a good turn, it's always because you've just done me a bad turn I know now to bow. I'll get some more done. Oh, no, you won't. Why? You won't. Just stay where you are. It's only a couple of quid till the weekend. Ten. There were sixteen. Just a weekend. Oh, you thieving, great, rotten lump. Have I going to put it back? Liar. Listen to me. Dirty, rotten, stinking liar. Elder. Shut up. Oh, where did I ever get you from? Eh? Fell over you, didn't I, in blackout? Whew. Should have left you there, pigging your own swill. Cos what have you ever brought me, eh? Nothing. Elder. Nothing. Oh, a couple of kids, yeah. Yeah, we mustn't forget them, I suppose. One of us doesn't know we're alive. And the other one, what, looks down his nose at us because he thinks we're muck. And you know what, Stanley? He's right, isn't he? Because that's just what we are, muck. Six quid till the weekend. Oh, will you listen? It's not the money. It's us. I mean, look at us. Spent all our lives arriving here to this. That's all right. Oh, it's not all right. Oh, don't you ever take your nose out your rotten beer pot long enough to look around you. Don't you ever look back on us married life, Sam. Life? <laughs> Knocked about from pillar to post, in work, out of work, dull, dull, rotten, dull. It's not as bad as that. Oh, of course it is. You and your glass back. 
her up at Inkerman Street. Everybody out there laughing at us. Oh, you want a good laugh? Go find Stanley Ogden. Oh, and don't miss her what's with him, her in the red rotten Mac. Oh. Don't you understand? I'm sick of being walked on. I'm sick of being the mug round here. And I'm sick of you. So why don't you just do me a favour and go away? Go on, just go. Right. Sorry now. Who's sorry Maria. now? Give us what kind of fool am I? Yeah. That's a nice one, that. Oh, no, that's more your song, that, Hilda. Oh, do you reckon? Yeah. What kind of fool am I? Hey, tell us, Stan. A Ruddy Biggin. A Ruddy Biggin. What kind of fool am I? Ruddy Biggin, it's Ruddy Biggin. Hey, hey, hang on, hang on. Let's have a toast. <laughs> uh, from the honoured guest yeah. to the host and the hostess, I give you Stan and Hilda. Ah. You can flame and keep him. <laughs> hey, come on, Stan, have one of your cigars. Oh, flipping lightly. But see that? Made in Woolwich. Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a rum and he's you know. He's like this every Christmas. Do you know, he's as thick as two short planks all the year round, but Christmas, you're the life and soul of the party, aren't you? Hey, I'm enjoying this. Come here, you. Oh, get up! Get up, get up! Get up, get up! Get up, Why can't we have a proper drink? Hey, yeah. Come on, let's go down the pub. Why not? What about the pots? Load the flipping pots! All right, knock all over the roof and pray for rain. <laughs> We've been together now for 40 years And it don't seem dead Hilda! Will you stop making that row? Like a lump of coke stuck under the back gate. Leave her be, Fred. She's happy. Happy? What right has she to be happy? She's been wed to Stanley for 40 years and she's still outside the loony bin. Oh, only just. Wed to Stan, 40 years, and him about as much use and comfort to her as a gumboil. And she's singing. Elder belt up, Chuck, there's a good one. When do we last have kibbers? When do we last have holiday? Oh, once. What are you doing? Looking at myself. What for? I think I was 14 when I first decided my face didn't suit me. What's wrong with it? Weren't much cop then. But being fed up and wore out on the wrong side of 50 hadn't done a lot to improve it. Well, do something about it. Let's have fried eggs and fried bread. Well, what do you mean, do something about it? Like what, for instance, head transplants? Well, you women can. It's always in papers. A new hairdo or a new eyeshadow or lipstick. Any guns like that, you know. Do you know, I'd love to be beautiful. Just for about 24 hours to see what it were like. Oh, you're not interested, are you? I don't know what all the fuss is about, all of a sudden. It's not all of a sudden. It's been simmering up for years. Just gets worse at the beginning of spring, that's all. Eh? No, you don't get it, do you? That's cos you haven't got no soul. Of course I've got a soul. How do you know? Cos I'm hungry. Britain's ideal couple, this. Hey, yeah, Phil, I'll take first class, cos I've not been wed for nigh on 40 years for now, I'll tell you. Go on, the there, Chuck. Go on, Right. Squeeze them. Yeah, there we are. Get the muffs on him. Here we go. Oh, OK. All right. Right. OK. Yeah. Now, I'm just reminding you, Flower, that the name of the game is knowing everything, and I mean everything, about your ever-loving. <laughs> right, Mrs O, I'm going to be asking him in there what scent you um, use. A uh, tripe that's gone off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I always use a French perfume, what I get from Woolies, on special offer. <laughs> hey, Hilda, if I come and knock at your door and he says that I hear you've got a closet that won't work, would he say he's upstairs in there? <laughs> Mrs. Duckworth, this is not a free for all. Oh. <coughs> right, Hilda. If you wanted to find your hard working breadwinner and he wasn't in the bookies and he wasn't in the nearest boozer, where would you look? 19 in Common Street. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, first I'd look in the chippy and then in the Legion and then out in the library. Where's that, love? <laughs> anyway, I'm chucking the last one at you now, Petal. What item of apparel 
and it says here, would your stand say you took off last before getting into the conjugal bed? <laughs> Our bed's not conjugal. <laughs> No, no, it's a three-sprung interior mattress that we got after the war at Henry's in Market Street. Hey, and they still aren't pay for flaming things. <laughs> All right, come on, Flower. What do you take off last, Tilda? I take my slippers off, don't I? Well, I never sleep in my slippers. <laughs> hey, Stanley, come on, it's your big chance now. Come on. Go on, Stanley. Hey, I wonder what Charles and Lady Di would make of this lot. Come on, boys. Now, there's only one all-correct round so far, so remember, Stan and Hilda, this could lead to a final eliminator between you and the young Tilsleys for the golden prize of sunshine and champers. Right, Stan. What perfume would you say this little treasure here most commonly uses? Hey. Oh, Stan! Oh, <laughs> me. Now then, what scent do you most commonly associate with your missus? French, English, or something more exotic? Uh, fish and chips. <laughs> you? <laughs> Second question. You're not at work, you're not in your favourite Newton and Ridley boozer. Where else would you be skiving? Ninety Ingerman. <laughs> I don't want to listen. <laughs> Stan, what does Hilda get rid of last thing at night? Lodger. Her <laughs> <laughs> <A> teeth. <laughs> it's only one all correct round. That makes Brian and Gail Tilsley <laughs> the winner! Mr. and Mrs. Contest, flaming fiasco all through you. Showed me up some at rotten. It's only a laugh. Oh, wait till I get you in that house. You'll not be laughing then. Go on, get off. Hang on. Oh, uh, well, I did. I was just, um, I was just going. I've been uh, cleaning up for him. So before you go. Yeah. You know that twenty-five p you've just conned me out of. Pay. You can earn it by putting these on that bed. Oh, pink sheets, eh? You don't want me to give them a squirt of channel number five and all, do you? Whatever turns you on. You know, I'm not sure I should be a party to this. To what? Whatever it is you've got in mind. What have you got in mind, Mr. Fairclough? Hang on. Fairclough. <laughs> Put her up. Our Trevor and Polly. The kiddies can share Eddie's old room and they can stop at Emily's. I'm sure she wouldn't mind just for the one night. Or we could find them a little inexpensive bed and breakfast place if they'd sooner. They're not coming over here, are they? I didn't reckon you'd plan on bringing him over. I'm not planning. I've already done it. I dropped him a line yesterday saying they'd all be welcome to come and celebrate us Ruby wedding. And how many thousands have you invited? Thousands, Chuck. No, I'm a reasonable woman. Just 20 or so. I've made a list. 20? Mm. It's amazing how your friends tot up when you write them all down. Hi, when you give them free booze. Well, what would you prefer, Stan? A nice little candlelight supper for two, with me running down to the chippy and you fetching in a dozen cans of ale. Now you're talking. Listen, I never had no wedding reception, but I'm determined I'm not going to wait till my golden wedding before I have a celebration. Well, it's only 10 years. In another ten years, Stan, always assuming I haven't left you for a younger man, would you be able to host a, a champagne buffet at the Midland, followed by dancing till midnight to a live orchestra? What? Uh, I frightened you, didn't it? Now, after that, anything I suggest can only be an improvement. Stan, I don't know what time I'll be back, cos I might pop into town after. I want to have a look for a new frock. I'll need one for the party. What's wrong with your black one? Oh, there's no wrong with it, except Mrs Lowther give it me. And I can hardly wear one of her cast-offs when she's coming as a guest, can I? Oh, they're definitely coming, are they? Well, I'm going to ask them when I go there later on. 
but I think they'll only be too pleased to join our festivities. She's become very attached to me, Mrs Lowther, you know. Yeah, she treats me more like a friend than an employee. We have lovely little chats over us coffee and digestives. It's more like a social occasion, really, me going there. You don't actually do any work, then? Well, of course I flame in work. Oh, Luke, when do I ever stop working? Certainly not in this house. That, Stanley, is a very expensive carpet. A very expensive carpet. It's not a flaming ashtray. When 20 of your friends are stomped all over it, it'll look like an ashtray. It's not a soggy beer, that. <laughs> You. I thought you were going to town to buy a frock. Decided not to bother. I'll probably wear me black after all. I'll have to bother to save anyway. What about it being Mrs. Lowther's cast off? Well, it won't matter now. They can't come. Oh, they'd have been out there, lovers, anyway. They would not. This isn't going to be one of your beer and pork pie do's, you know, Stanley. Oh, no. This party is going to be exactly how Mrs Lowther herself would have arranged it. They'd have felt perfectly at home. And why can't they come? Well, they're going to Tenerife on the 10th. Our do's on the 7th. Yes, well, they've, they've got a lot to attend to. There's always a lot to do before they go on holiday, busy people like them. Still, she's given me a very nice present. How much? How do you know it's money? Well, if they've got time to come to our party, she won't have time to get some presents, will she? Five pound. And I'm going to put it towards the cost of the refreshments. How much is that going to be? Oh, well, I don't know yet. I'm waiting for Betty to tell me. Betty? What's it going to do with her? Oh, didn't I mention it, Chuck? I've decided to have the party in the Rovers Select instead of in here. After what you said this morning, I know how worried you are about the new carpet. <laughs> Do you sell chocolates? Those uh, big boxes? Ah, uh, yes, we've got a few. Not as many as usual. They all go at this time of year. Present for an Still old friend, do yeah. I detect? You do indeed, Mrs Ogden. Huh? I'm glad to see you haven't lost any of your perspicacity. Oh, well, I always try and keep myself looking nice. <laughs> Here we are. Milk, plain, or half and half? Oh, better play it uh, safe, and I'll take that one of half and half. Right, yes. Well, if they're for the old friend I think they're for, you'd do better take in a bottle of gin. Ilda. Oh, I'm not saying she's a tickler. No, I'm just saying that Elsie prefers gin to chocolates. Well, she tell you herself. Mm. I'm only trying to help. Oh, and I'm very grateful, Mrs Ogden. Very good suggestion. I'll take both. Right, I'll order them buns for you then, shall I, Ilda? Two dozen. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, no, better make it three hours, because Stan can polish off a dozen on the day. <laughs> Well, I uh, expect I'll be seeing you again then, if you're uh, stopping round these parts for a bit. Oh, I've no doubt that our paths will cross, Mrs Ogden. They've never failed to before. Yes, well, uh, nice to see you. Mm. Oh, and uh, give my regards to uh, your friend. Hey, do you know what that twerk Billy Walker's done now? You know he banged Percy Ogden, don't you? Well, he's only banged Mavis Riley now. So the girls from the cabin, you know. You can't open your gob in that flaming pub. What's up? I think you know very well what's up, Stanley. Sit down. Do you want a tea? I said sit down! No need to shout. That is my monthly statement from the bank. I know what it is. Well, will you read it, Stanley, please? It's got your name on the top, not mine. You can read it, I suppose. Understand it? If I wanted to. Right, well, I'll read it for you. Especially these two items here. Both withdrawals. That means money taken out. I know what it means. £20 both times, making 40 altogether. And do you know how they were withdrawn, Stanley? From the service till. Well, that's what the bank calls it. You'll know it better as the outside cash dispenser. Now then, I didn't draw out those two £20. So who did? You did, didn't you? You took my cash card, stole it, and you went to that dispenser and got £20 out twice. That's stealing and all, didn't it? No. Well, did I say you could? I didn't give you permission, did I? It was my money I drew, wasn't it? It's my account. You've just said yourself it's got my name on it. It was compensation from me too, wasn't it? That's my money. Well, am I right? Yes or no? Yeah, I suppose so. I suppose you could say that. Forty pounds come out of your compensation. Well, what are you money about then? 
Stan, when did you last work? I mean, when did you last put a full week in? Look, it's winter time. Winter time's not for winter cleaning, is it? It's months, Chuck, long before the winter set in. What's that got to do with it? Well, I don't think you'll ever put in a full week's work again. And then what are we going to live on? How are we going to manage? I'll be drawing my pension so am I. Oh, aye. And how many pints of beer a week will that buy you? How many packets of fags and pie and chips suppers? That's why I wanted to save that money in the bank stand for a rainy day. And they're going to be some, make no mistake. It's only 40 quid. Yes, well, 40 this week, 40 next. Oh, I know you. You're like a big sponge when it comes to money. You just soak it up. That was compensated for me too. My money. For what I can spend as I wish. Not in your bank. Oh, I see. So what you're saying is, you can spend your money on your own pleasure, playing big spenders in the Rovers. While mine, the money my brother left me, that's for putting butter on a spread when it looks like we're going to have to have it dry. You got your carpet, didn't you? Am I the only one that walks on it, Stanley? It's only 40 quid. They spend 40 quid on kids' toys nowadays. Oh, I know, Chuck. I know it's hard having money in the bank when all you've got in your pocket's fresh air, but... Well, this was supposed to be our nest egg. I never thought we'd ever have a nest egg. I'll not draw any more. Go and make that cup of tea. Hello, sister. It's me, Mrs Ogden. You rang about my husband, Mr Stanley Ogden. I... Oh. I see. When? I'm sure you have. Yes. Yes, I will. Good night. Thank you for phoning. He's gone now. My stand's gone. Oh, leave those, Ivy. You'll be late for work. Oh, you won't mind, Hilda. And, uh, listen, I'll get a bit of shopping in for you, shall I? Because, well, you've not in love, have you? No, I've not had time. Any road, don't bother. I'll have to think. Well, half knows what you have, won't you? I'll, I'll get him to make a road up for you, shall I? Yeah, he'll know. Would have been us anniversary next week. Well, it... It still will be, love. And it will be every year. I know. Yeah, you do, don't you? You find it's a comfort in a way, Olga, because you know that everything don't just go, you know. I cry one day every year, love, if I never cry any other time. I've not cried. Oh, you will, love. You will. You will just give yourself a chance. Now, look, is there, is there anything else I can do for you while I'm here? Oh, no, no thanks, Ivy. You've been very good. Oh, I don't know, love. Oh, uh, well, there is just one thing if you're going into our house. Yes, love. Well, would you ask him if he could call in? Only there's, well, there's things to do and uh, I'd respect his advice. He won't need asking, will he, Olga?
But one blessing, any road, it wasn't a terrible long drawn out do like it can be. No. I mean, it's harder for you, I know. I mean, you haven't got time to get used to things. No, but, well, I wouldn't have wanted to see him lingering. Do you mind if I give you a bit of advice? Because I've been through it, you know. Oh, I know, yeah. Well, try to think ahead. You know, think as far ahead as you can, as soon as you can. Try and think what you're going to do after the funeral. Plan it along with the funeral. Hmm. Yeah, well, we'll have to get all that arranged. Oh, well, would you like me to go down and see the undertakers for you? Oh, if you would, Alf. Oh, but uh, not them down by the bridge in Rosamond Street. Oh, do you not want them? It was them what buried Bert Tilsley. Well, that was a decent do. Oh, yeah, but... Well, one of the men, you know, the, uh, the men they have, he had a paper in his pocket. Folded up, but I noticed it all the same. I don't want anything like that. Oh, well, I'll go to Parsons and I know them. Um, it's going to cost a bit, you know that. Oh, yes, but there'll be no penny pinching. Mm. Well, that bit of a grant you get doesn't go far, you know. Have you got any, um, any policies tucked away? Oh, yes, we've had one since, uh, oh, since the war. I don't suppose it'll be much, though. It was only coppers when it started. And if you only put coppers in, you only get coppers out, don't you? <sighs> well, we'd better have a look at it anyway. <laughs> Is your son coming round? Your, um... Trevor. Oh, yes. Yes, I rung him up. He's coming now, over. Oh, good. Well, what I'll do is I'll go down to Parsons. With a bit of luck, your Trevor will be here when they come. Yeah. And don't worry. We'll do right by Stan. The money doesn't matter. I'll find that policy. So I'll arrange for Mr Ogden to be moved to the Chapel of Rest. Now, you don't have to decide all the details of the funeral here and now. I'm sure you want to discuss it with your nearest and dearest. Well, there's not so many. Hmm. One thing, if you're thinking of cremation, there's a form that's required from the doctor at the hospital. So if you could let me know as soon oh, no. as you can. No, I think, uh, I think I'd like him to be buried. Oh, is there a family grave? No. Well, a plot would cost rather more than cremation, I mean. I'm sure you understand this. Uh, oh, yes, but, well, would that be a plot forever? Seventy-five years. Oh, long enough. Yes. Anyway, I'll leave this brochure with you. You'll find everything's detailed in there. Everything you might want and what it costs. So I'll wait to hear from you. Well, I want a grave, definitely. A grave with a stone and his name on. Of course, I see a lot of funerals, burials and cremations, but I always think a grave with a stone. Yes, a well-kept grave can be a very beautiful thing and a comfort. That's what I want. Oh, Trevor, I'm glad you could come. Of course I could come, Mum. Mind now. Mind your good suit. Just been trying to get the fire to burn up. I'm sorry I never made it to the hospital, but I've been that tied up. And I didn't know. No, of course you didn't, Chuck. Now, now don't go blaming yourself, because it's past mending. Well, it's all past mending now, isn't it? Between me and me dad. I would have come, though. Well... You're here now. Uh, could you do with a cup of tea? I could do with something. It's a shocking road, that A6. Yeah, well, just let me clean myself up and I'll see to it. Is, uh, is Polly all right? And the kiddies? They're fine. She sends her condolences. It's a pity Stan never saw more of them. Uh, will I make your bed up? The room's aired. Oh, don't trouble yourself, Mum. Oh, it's no trouble. Uh, I've got to get back tonight. Because, uh, well, there's a lot of things I've got to do tomorrow. And like I said, uh, I've got a lot on at the moment. And there's a few things that are a bit, well, you know, um, touch and go. You can't stop, then? Well, I would if I could. Yeah, well, never mind. I should have called Polly while I was out. Where's the nearest phone box? Oh, he'd let you make a call from the Rovers or Alf at the corner shop. There is a phone box in Rosamond Street, but it's never working. Vandals. I'll find one. You know, I think me dad would like to be cremated. Really? I mean, he wouldn't like to think about you stood around in a cemetery this time of year catching your death of cold. I've got a good coat. 
I'll get it. Uh, only I said I'd pop round to see your mother, but if it's not convenient, though. No, no, come in. It's Mr. Uh, Roberts. Of course it is. Corner shop. Uh, Mr. Parsons came round this afternoon now, thank you. Ah, did you get something sorted out? Well, he's left me to decide things. It's an expensive business, isn't it? I know you shouldn't think about these things, but it is. Yeah, well, you have to think about, don't you? I mean, £30 grant from government won't go far, will it? And there'll be about £70 from the policy. Doesn't go near, does it? Oh, we'll find the money from somewhere. I've got a bit put by. Yes, well, this is one of those times when families stick together, isn't it? Yeah, well, these things always happen at the wrong time, don't they? There's never a right time, is there? Well, I mean, you know, Christmas coming on, presents for the kids and everything, and Damien's school fees. Well, I'm sure your father would have left it a bit if he'd had the choice. Well, I had no idea it was as much as this I didn't. Now, you mustn't go dipping into your pocket, Chapa. I mean, you've got the children to think about. Stan wouldn't want to see them go short of anything at Christmas. I know you would, Chuck, but uh, I wouldn't take it. The money's there. I was saying to me, Mum, about cremation. I think it's the best thing myself. No, I want there to be a grave where I can go. Look, I don't want to bring it down to money. But it's close on £200 just for the plot, Mum. Ah, it is a lot of money. I mean, just for somewhere to go and put flowers. Oh, I'm not just talking about somewhere to visit. I mean a place to go. I want a grave with a stone and his name on and space for another. Then when my time comes, you won't have to decide anything, Trevor. It'll all be cut and dried and paid for. Cos that's where I'll go. It comes to us all, and it's never the right time, is it? You know now to add it, young fellow, my lad, do you? Best way to be, and all. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Amen. For thine Amen. is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And still piping hot. Oh my God, Joan! <gasps> Mrs. Larkin, God in heaven, be calm, come. Hey, come on, breathe, huh? breathe. Come on, quickly breathe. Breathe. That's it. Joan. Please, God, no. Joan. Don't. Please, God. That's the word. Uh, she wasn't attacked, but uh, our cleaner, Mrs. Ogden, she took the brunt of that situation. Horrible. Yeah, she's an X-ray now. She may have a fractured skull. And by the time I arrived on the scene, she was practically choking. Why the hell wasn't I there? Why don't you get a blaster takeaway? What's wrong with beans on toast, for God's sake? I know it sounds irrational. You did all you could. Pardon me, Mr. and Mrs. Webster, is it? Yeah, that's right. I'm Mrs. Ashcroft. Mrs. Lowther's sister. What's happened? You don't know. Oh, all we know is Hilda's been attacked and she's in casualty. Well, seemingly there was a break in and Bob, that's Dr. Lowther, well, he'd gone out to get some chips or something and when he got back to the house... It wasn't in the street, because we thought it was in the street and she'd been set on or something. Knife to something. It's not that bad, is it? Well, that depends. Apparently, Mrs. Ogden suffered a fairly severe blow to the head. What about Mrs. Lowther? Because that's what I suppose she only left by, isn't it? Well, Joan's in shock, and of course she has a heart condition. But other than that, apparently she doesn't appear to be harmed. What did you the yes her with? Please think that she was violently pushed, fell, and hit her head on the table. Police are involved? Yes, they're here. They've talked to Dr. Lowther, and of course they're hoping to talk to either Joan or Mrs. Ogden. Hello. Uh, it's bad news, I'm afraid. Not Joan. No, Joan is responding to signs of improvement, but uh, Mrs. Ogden. But she's still in considerable danger. There's a head wound, respiratory problems, concern about chest infection. Add all these together, plus Mrs. Ogden's age, and they thought it best to put her into intensive care. Will she pull through, Doctor? Are you her daughter? No, just a friend. It was a serious blow. We've done a brain scan and there are no blood clots, fortunately. That would have complicated things. As it is, we shall just have to wait and see. I'm sorry, Bob. Something's come up. I just have to... Um... Of course, don't worry. Is there anything I can get you, Doctor? You know there's a tea machine, don't you? Don't you? I wouldn't wait around for Mrs. Ogden, you know. There's nothing you can do. Ringing in the morning, see what progress there's been. Excuse me. Is it normal for people to be unconscious this long? The monitoring of progress, don't worry.
been playing football again, eh, Chuck? Hello, Bet. special. No. Does Trevor know? They've told his wife, Hilda. They've got through to her. Will he be coming? He's away on business, Hilda. Oh. He's always very busy. Yeah. Listen, Hilda. The nurse says I've not got to stop long. So I'm just here to tell you that everything's being seen to. Kevin and Sally are looking after Rommel. Ah, oh, bless him. And Alf sends his best. He brought me. That's good of him. But the main thing is, you've not got to worry. You've got to get some rest. We need you back in that Rovers, girl. Will, will you tell Doctor now that I'm sorry? Hilda? We couldn't stop them, Bet. They were too much for us, me and Mrs. Lowther. Shh, Hilda. Don't get upset, love. How is she? Who? Oh. Mrs. Lowther. I should just get some rest, Hilda, love. I hope it didn't hurt her at all. Don't worry, Hilda. Honest. Just try and get some rest, love. Mm. I think that's long enough for now. Yeah. I've got to go, Hilda. But I'll be back tomorrow, kid. Thanks for coming, Ben. It is good of you. Of course it isn't. The flowers are lovely. I like a nice croissant. Hey, there's a little shop just as she come in. Oh, they must make her bomb, mustn't they? And you've, you, you've seen to Rommel then, have you? Hey, don't worry about him. He's no trouble at all. No. No, he's a good cat. Everyone sends the love, Mrs. O, and they're all missing you. <laughs> Even them that aren't, eh? Everyone. Hey, and you're not to worry. No, I know. That said. Oh, tell you what. You're better off in here today than outside. Mm. Flipping freezing outside. Kevin, will, will, will you do something for me? Yeah, of course I will. Well, will you find out how Mrs Lowther is? Nobody seems to know in here. Why, why won't they tell me anything? I'm lying here and they all say don't worry and I'm worried sick. What's happening? Hey, come on, Mrs O. Please find out, Kevin. Sally, is there someone you know? Is the Kevin? Yeah. Sir, it's, uh, it's bad news. Kevin. Oh, tell me. She's died. Mrs. Lowder's died. Oh, no. Oh, Kevin. I'm sorry, Mrs. Ogden. <laughs> It's all right, Mrs. It's all right. Oh. <laughs> Let's get the nurse, Ken. No, no. Oh, it's all right. I had to know, Sally. What about Dr. Lowther? He's fine. He found you and he got an ambulance and that. It was in a heart, see? Would be. Oh, poor Dr. Lowther. <laughs> you haven't heard a word I've said, have you? Eh? I said you haven't heard a word I've been saying. Oh, I I'm sorry, I was miles away. I was telling you, veins. I've been a martyr to them all my life. Oh, yeah. What with them and my gallstones? It's been a right year, I can tell you. Yeah, it must have been. Still. There's always somebody worse off than you, isn't there? That's what I always say. Yeah, I suppose there is. I think you've got a visitor. Oh, good 
Good morning. Good morning. Thought I'd just pop in, see how you're going on. Can't stop long, I'm afraid. Oh, she's eats better, aren't you, Mrs. Ogden? Oh, well, this is Mrs. Gladwin. Oh. Gallstones. Pardon? That's what I'm in for. Oh, I see. Well, if you'll not be needing your paper for five minutes. Oh, yes, they are. Here. Ta, love. Oh, thank you. So, how are you feeling? Oh, all right, I suppose. Only all right? Sally and Kevin said you were feeling so much better. Yeah, well, I suppose I am, but... Well, it's just... Just today, isn't it? Today? Mrs Lather's funeral this morning. I'm sorry, I had no idea. No, well, you wouldn't know, would you? Do you know, I can't get her out of my mind. I mean, there she was, making plans to move out to Derbyshire with Dr Lowther. Looking forward to taking things easy, the pair of them. They had the cottage all ready. And now... Well, I, I still can't believe it's happened. I mean, she had everything to live for. They both did. Look, I know how you must feel about Mrs Lowther and Dr Lowther too. And I can well understand how your thoughts are with them just now. But you've got yourself to think about as well, you know. You've got your life to get on with. Yeah, that's what Kevin and Sally keep telling me. And they're right. I mean, what's happened's happened, and we all regret it more deeply than words can say. But there's nothing anyone can do to change things, not now. So just you put your mind to getting yourself on your feet again and out of here. There are a lot of people missing you, you know. Eh, uh, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry, madam. I was looking for a Mrs Hilda Ogden. But I must have got the wrong ward. I was looking for somebody much older. Daddy, what are you two in here? Well, that's a daft question, isn't it? Well, come on. Watch you up a little bit. There must be room for two in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Yes, Tal, So, uh, how long are they going to keep you here? Oh, search me. I didn't reckon I was ever going to get out again the way I felt a couple of days ago. I can't believe that, after what you've been through. How did you hear about it, any road? Paper. Paper? Yeah. Have they any idea who did it? Oh, one of them they have. I picked him out from his picture and the police got him the same afternoon. I wish I'd have got my hands on him first. It'd have been no stake to go battering anybody else, I can tell you that. No, well, I'd rather not talk about it, if you don't mind. I thought you'd come to cheer me up. I have. What do you want me to do? Sing or dance? <laughs> you can tell me about Marion and that little girl of yours. They're fine. Well, haven't you got a photo of out? No, not on me. Oh, honest fellas. I'll tell you what, I'll send you one as soon as I get home. How's that? I'll believe that when I see it, and all. Look, Hilda, I'm sorry I haven't kept in touch as often as I might have. But I've not forgotten you, you know. No, of course you haven't. I know how it is. Nothing's changed, honest. You're still on the bins. What else? Mind you, we do get a better class of rubbish up our way. <laughs> as long as you're happy. Have you ever known me any other way? Anyway, that's enough about me. What have you been up to? And the rest of me mates down the street. Well, I suppose the biggest thing was Bert Lynch's wedding. Bert Lynch married? That's right. Well, it can't be anybody I know. How do you figure that out? Because everybody I know had their chance and kicked it into touch long before I left. <laughs> Present company accepted, I take it. Well, I can't speak for him. <coughs> A mate of mine went back to school did very nicely for himself, thank you very much. A mate of yours, did. That's right. Well, there you are, you see. Now, what did he do? A business studies, accountancy, something like that? Nick the lead off the roof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to miss you, Hilda. Oh, the place won't be the same without you. Well, you know, I always thought the only way I'd ever leave that house would be feet first, like Star. <laughs> I think that might very well be true in my case, Hilda. Hey, do you mind? I've got our sign set on a cottage in the country. Hasn't everybody? Yeah. <laughs> do you know, Stan's idea of heaven was hiding out deck chairs and paint, oh. sitting in one himself. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Hilda, let's be having you. We want your body. No. Never mind, probably. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, sorry to interrupt your boozing and your guzzling. This won't take long. Now then, as you all know, our Hilda's leaving us tomorrow for past year's news. Hey, Hilda, do you fancy oh. taking the toy boy with you? <laughs> <laughs> you won't last two minutes in country, Jacko. You won't stand that clean living. <laughs> now, as I was saying, Hilda's leaving us tomorrow. So we thought that we'd help her... Uh, oh, sorry, uh, sorry. <laughs> send her on her way with a couple of prezzies, which Love. Mike Baldwin will now present. Michael? Yeah. 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 Well, I never thought the day'd come I'd keep anything stunned from Hilda Ogden. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know we had these knees up for you, did you? No. I must be slipping. <laughs> I never thought I'd see Mr Baldwin give anybody out for no. Oh, <laughs> well, you've done, you got me wrong, Vera. Hilda, what can I say? It's been a pleasure knowing you. And from all of us, good luck and God bless. This is a real good Oh, I don't know what to say. I mean, Go I never on, expected on. any of this. Well, I, I thought a lot of you'd be glad to see the back of me. No, 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 no. no but thinking it over, I should have known better because, well, you've all been good friends and good neighbours and... Well, what more could anybody ask, especially um, these days? Um, Look, I, I know I'll be, um... I know I'll be moving to a posh house and that, but, well, I'll be leaving my heart behind in this street. Uh -huh. I will, honest. Uh -huh. Thank you all very much. Now you can all get back to doing what you do doing best. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Hey, hasn't everybody been good? Especially better, Mr. Baldwin. They seem to have organised it all. Yeah, I suppose they have. I don't know why it should have been them two. I mean, they're not exactly uh, bosom pals, are they? Oh, they are. She lived with him at number three, you know, for quite some time. Hey, old dear, give us one last song. Oh, yeah. Was it worth it? Typical. It's always the way. If you were doing a moonlight flip, the street would be even. Hey, peep your own a bit. Pardon? Peep your own. Go on, there'll be a nice tip for you. What's all that toot tooting? Taxi. You'll never guess who's getting out of it and all. Hey, hey, hey. Right. Oh, Afternoon, Al. Hilda Flower. Hello, love. Well, I was just in town for a bit of shopping, so thought I'd have a look at you. Travelling about in taxis now, Hilda, aren't they? Yes, well, Dr. Lowther always says to me, save your legs and not your shillings. It's one of his sayings, is that? Ah. I'm that pleased to see you. Give her a drink, Ali. Light bottle, is it? Give over. Port and lemon. Special occasion. Oh, uh, no, I I'll not have the lemonade in it, thank you. Uh, well, that's how they have their port where I am now. Just on its own, with nothing in it. Oh, you're fixing with the sophisticated county set now, eh? Well, in that case, you can have the Alec Gilroy special, and they call it a Grimsby. Oh, yeah. It's a small British port. Hey, give over, you mean beggar. Give her the proper stuff and a large one. 
It's not every day Elder comes to see us. Just as well. Who's doing your cleaning nowadays, then? I don't think you know her. No, I don't think I want to, neither. <laughs> Still scrubbing for that Dr. Lowther bloke, are you? Excuse me, I've never been a scrubber for anybody. More than some people can say. What are you getting at? That now, Vera, Vera, give over. How is Dr. Lowther? Keep him well, is he, with you looking after him? I've not heard him complaining. <laughs> Elder, I know that look on your face. I've seen it a thousand times. It's that look when you've got a little gem of a news item you just burst in to tell somebody. Don't know what you mean by that. I was never one to gossip. Fair enough, I'm wrong then. Well, as a matter of fact... <coughs> <coughs> uh, do you think I could have just a splash of lemonade oh. in this pot? <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, seeing as how you're worming it out of me, there is something. Dr Lowther, he's proposed, asked me to be Mrs Lowther. Oh, oh nice. Has he gone senile? Shut up, you! I think that's wonderful, Elder. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, that? it is. I'm very pleased for you. Oh, well, look, take my advice, Elder. Get the arrangements made fast, because, you know, they sometimes have a remission. He could be clear in his mind again without any warning at all. Will you give over? <laughs> Ooh, they know how to charge in that flower shop. Not that I'd begrudge it. And you don't need to fret, Stan. I shan't be marrying Dr. Lowther. Not because of anything Vera Duckworth said, mind. No, oh, he's a very genuine fella. Very gentlemanly. Ever so clean in his ways. <laughs> Not like you were. Our doormat used to last longer than everybody else's because you always walked around it. <laughs> no, but him being a doctor, he was trained to wipe his feet. They wipe everything. When he asked me, you know, when he <laughs> proposed, like, well, I must admit I was pleased. It's always nice to be asked. But you needn't worry, Stan. I shall tell him thank you, but no. Doctor and Mrs. Lowther. No, it wouldn't be right. I know I only promised till death do us part, Stan. And it did. But all the same, I can't do it. No, I shall be Mrs. Stanley Ogden till they cart me off. Then again, you see, if I did marry him, well, after, like, if there is an after up there, well, I wouldn't like there to be any unpleasantness, Stan, between you and Dr. Lowther over me. No, no, you always came first, Stan, and you always will. If there really is an old place. They are. Very nice, is that? Oh, just look at that poor chap there. You see, it's right what I always used to tell you, Stan, when you was feeling hard done by. And if you don't believe me, you've only got to look at that chap next to you. There's always somebody worse off than yourself. Oh, yeah, lovely, thanks. Just hang your coat on. OK, love. There we are. Ooh, new curtains. Very nice. Yeah, treated <laughs> myself. Got cushion covers to match. Oh, how wow, <laughs> lovely, Hilda. Sit down, Betty. Oh, thanks, I'll fetch the tea. Right. I've just made it. OK. Have you heard from your Trevor? You know, since the last time I came. No. He's very busy, of course. I'll bet. Got a new house, though. Yeah, Polly sent me a copy of the estate agent's details. Oh, look! Got a very big garden. Hey, how about your garden? Well, uh, I had a phone call last night, and uh, well, he sends his best wishes to you. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> Has he been up to see you? Well, no. Well, you see, he's very busy as well. Yeah. I tell you who I have heard from, though. Go on, you'll be very interested. Here, it's from Bet. Oh, where's it from? <clears throat> Oh, I don't know where my glasses are. What's it say? Oh, not much. It says, missing all the rain and the fog. <laughs> I'm working in a bar with someone who reminds me of Eddie Yates, long oh. bed. <laughs> <It's enough. laughs> all okay. right for some, eh? Well, she seems happy enough, you know. Yeah. yeah. Hey, what? 
Spain? Isn't that where Elsie Tanner ended up? No, that were Portugal. She went there, you know, with that fella from the Navy. He had that little wine bar, you know, on the Algarve. Oh, yeah. 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 Do you know what? what? Elsie Tanner's the only woman I've ever known that made a profession out of getting married. You're not jealous, are you? Of Elsie Tanner? Mm. <laughs> I've never thrown myself at a fella. No, from the moment I fell over my stand in the blackout, I was uh -oh. a one-man woman. Not like that Rita Fairclough, <laughs> Madame Toffee shop. Nobody can have hair that big and stay level-headed. Oh, dear. <laughs> like that other pair of painted dolls, <laughs> Bet Lynch and Elsie Tanner. Ah! Oh, morning. Listen to this, Elder. She felt as though an electric current ran through her. Her very skin tingled, alive and sensitive, as he stood there, close enough for her to breathe in the warm, musky maleness of his body. Her bones turned to liquid as his strong, powerful fingers began to gently unfasten the tiny buttons of her blouse. Warm, musky maleness of his body? Sounds like he needs a good wash to me. Has it ever happened to you, though, Elder? Certainly not. Anybody touching my tiny buttons would have got a smack across his chops. Oh, come on. You must have had some magic moments that set you all a-quivering. If I have, I keep them to myself. Don't go splashing them all over the Sunday newspapers, like everybody else seems to do these days. You're only telling me. It's the same thing. Any road, what's got into you today? Well, I just felt in need of a strong dollop of romance. Naturally, I would have preferred the real thing. But unfortunately, you can't pick up husky fellas off the top of a counter for 95p. It's yesterday, isn't it? Is it? I thought it was today. Then again, we could both be wrong. Oh, no, I mean what's brought this on. Going to weddings always affects me like that and all. Well, mind you, in this case, it was more of a jilting. Don't let's have a post-mortem on that again, eh, Flower? Topic got chewed to bits enough in here last night to last me a lifetime. She'll just have to face it, you know. She's doomed never to be a bride. Do you know something, Cop? No. I think that's about the one and only thing me and Maeve have got in common. Landed on her feet all right when Len died, though, oh, didn't yeah. she? Yeah. I mean, nice little house, building firm and the cabin. Yeah. It's not the same, though, is it, having someone to love? I mean, a bit of security's all right, but I'd far rather have someone there to change a fuse and, and lock up at night, you know. She's thrown in a light, you know, with Alec Gilroy. Oh, right. aye. They've had a door put in between their flats. <laughs> For convenience, I say. By the mm. heck. First Bat Lynch and now Rita Fairclough. <laughs> he doesn't do things by halves, does he? <laughs> and to look at him, you wouldn't think he had the energy. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I hope they have some happiness together. <laughs> yeah. You know, Betty, I can't say I was surprised when you told me about Bat disappearing like that. Oh? I was surprised she stuck it so long. I mean, she was never what you'd call a natural landlady. Mm. Oh, she was all right, stood up behind the bar, showing everything God gave her and looking like a Christmas tree. <laughs> but she were nothing compared to Mrs Walker. Oh, oh now, there was a lady. Mm. She ran that pub like a captain on a ship. One or two round here like mm. her, you know. All lace curtain accents and brown bread with bits in. Very classy-like. You used to call her rotten behind her back. You said she was stuck up and put it all on. Ah, oh, no, now, beef. You did? Betty. No, we were always very close, me and Mrs oh. Walker. Oh, the number of times we've stood behind that bar, me polishing the top and her watching, admiring my handiwork. Mrs Ogden, she used to say. Mrs Ogden, I can say without fear of contraception <laughs> that your cleaning skills are unique. Unique, that's a very word uh. she used. Oh, yes. Got some very fond memories of Mrs Walker and the Rovers. Yeah. Very fond. I've been there nearly 30 years, you know. I oh, have. Yeah. I've seen them all come and go. Mrs Walker, Mr Walker, Bet, Alec, Fred G. Mm. Oh, yes. Jack, Vera, Liz MacDonald and uh, Raquel. She was my bridesmaid, you know, and I married Billy. I showed you the photos. Yes, yeah. Mm. There's been some comings and goings behind that bar. It doesn't look as if it's off, does it, between Tony and... Uh, Anything but. Ah, I'm glad. He's had a face as long as a fiddle all week. I'm glad too. Good luck. Mind you, if I didn't have getting this pub on my mind, I might have just scratched Rita's eyes out. You need a fella at Christmas. <laughs> yeah, you do. 
Don't keep it to yourself, Hilda. Let's all hear it. <laughs> go to midnight mass with me Jack Duckworth if only to thank him for saving your baby. Thank you. Come on. 